The World Health Organization has described the situation at Gaza's main hospital, Al Shifa, as dire and perilous, with food, water and power all running out. Hundreds of thousands of demonstrators take to the streets of France, Romania and Belgium, decrying rising anti-Semitism. Tens of thousands of protesters rally on the streets of Spain against Prime Minister Pedro Sanchez's plans to grant amnesty to sentenced Catalan lawmakers. The World Health Organization says the situation is dire and perilous at Gaza's main hospital. The organization had earlier lost contact with the Al Shifa on Sunday, but now it's reported not to be functioning. Doctors have confirmed food and water are running out, while heavy fighting and Israeli bombing has reportedly brought about a near complete loss of power. Israel's allies have expressed grave concern following the release of photos showing premature babies left in a surgical room instead of in vital incubators due to the power cut. Israel says it will help evacuate newborns from the hospital to a safer facility while insisting that the area is a legitimate military target as Hamas has its base underneath the buildings. Hamas denies this. The Israeli army claims to have left fuel near the Shifa hospital on Saturday night. It released footage purporting to show soldiers carrying some containers, but it was not picked up with hospital workers reportedly too afraid to come outside. Israel has come under mounting international pressure for a ceasefire, even from its closest ally, the United States, as the war enters its sixth week. Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu has told US media that a hostage deal could happen, but only with the release of all the nearly 240 hostages captured by Hamas in the October the 7th rampage that triggered the war. 18 Israelis have been injured, one critically after the Iranian-backed Hezbollah militia fired anti-tank missiles from southern Lebanon in a further sign that the skirmishes along the border are steadily escalating. A human chain in Israel was made in solidarity for the hostages taken by Hamas. Women's group in Tel Aviv have increased their calls for the release of the roughly 240 hostages seized by the Palestinian militants on October 7th and believed held in Gaza. Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu has told US media there could be a deal to free some of those being held by the militants, but critiques in Israel accuse him of not being interested in bringing them out alive, but only of being concerned with preserving his political future. Uh -huh. 100,000 demonstrators marching through the streets of Paris decrying rising anti-Semitism. Authorities say this was just one of approximately 70 events staged across the country which attracted more than 180,000 people in total, including politicians. Prime Minister Elizabeth Bourne and the leader of the far right, Marine Le Pen, attended the rally in the French capital. While President Macron did not attend, he expressed his support for the protest. Some 3,000 police officers were deployed in Paris to oversee the event. In Romania, protesters gathered in solidarity with Israel in Bucharest and called for the release of hostages taken by Hamas militants. Three dual Romanian Israeli citizens were among those captured. Uh, we just want this thing to end. We want peace and we want all the kidnapped people to come back to their loved ones, back home. And in Brussels, several hundred people also took part in a similar demo. This after the Interfederal Centre for Equal Opportunities and the fight against racism recorded 43 incidents involving people of Jewish descent in just one month, most concerning hate speech. Hundreds volunteered daily at this cooking school, now transformed into a humanitarian hub. Since Hamas launched an attack on Israel one month ago, prompting Israel to retaliate, killing thousands of Palestinians. David Kishka, a Franco-Israeli citizen, is head of the Israeli Association for Culinary Culture. He now manages volunteers who come to this school in Tel Aviv for those displaced by the Hamas attacks. On essaye de nourrir des familles qui ont des proches qui ont été pris en otage ou des familles qui sont en deuil et aussi des familles qui ont dû quitter le sud ou le nord puisqu'on a les problèmes sur nos, nos, nos deux frontières maintenant. More than 1,500 meals are prepared here and delivered daily. Much of the fresh produce comes from the areas hit by the October 7 attacks near the Gaza Strip. On achète aux agriculteurs qui ont tout perdu et on donne une nourriture saine, nourrissante aux gens qui sont qui sont réfugiés ici maintenant. 
About 50 professional chefs from Israel and abroad come here every day. Doing this is our way of also keeping our mind busy and not going nuts from what's going around and doing whatever we can in order to, to help meet it now. Our correspondent Valery Goria followed David on the delivery. This family was forced to move to Tel Aviv from the town of Zderot. Several of their relatives, including some of the children's friends, were killed by Hamas. They are now afraid of going outside of the Tel Aviv flat that was lent to them free of charge. We doesn't go out. We can't think about something else. Everyone we see is uh, look like someone is uh, uh, now going to shoot us, and, and the mind is never uh, stop. We don't sleep in the night. All the terrorists in my dream, if they walk and shoot me, and it's in my dream, and I wake up and I'm just crying, and I say to my mother, and then my mother crying. We go out how long it will be from our house, but please tell us that it's over. We don't, we can't, We can't do this again. Not again. A living hell for teachers working and living in the Gaza Strip. Since Israel began its relentless bombardment after Hamas's 7th of October attack, schools inside the besieged enclave have become makeshift refuge centres for thousands of displaced Palestinians. The Trade Union Education International says so far at least 130 teachers have been killed in Israeli strikes. <laughs> وأخرج منها يعني بعد خمس أو ست ساعات من العمل وأعود إليها كل يوم هكذا. While Israeli bombs continue to fall outside, teachers are still trying to conduct lessons inside. واليوم تقريبا صار إن واحد وثلاثين يوم يعني وأنا في المدرسة ليل مع نهار ليس فقط ال ال هو ك كمركز إيواء إنها ضمت ال المهجرين أو النازحين من أفراد قطاع غزة ولكن الأمر كمان تعدى لطالباتي أنا فقط الكثير من طالباتي التي كنت أدرسهن استشهدنا في القصف اللي هو قصف الاحتلال الإسرائيلي. These are some of the students who are living at this school, trying to find moments of respite and make sense of it all. كنا لابسين أنا وخوتي ورايحين على المدرسة وبعدين طلع الصواريخ وبدل ما نيجي نتعلم أجينا على المدرسة هنا أنا وأهلي وعماتي أنا كنت أروح على مدرستي اللي أتعلم وأقعد مع الأساتذة وأقعد وأتعلم وأتثقف مش زي الآن أجي على المدرسة كمركز ديواء لا في مية ولا كهرب والحياة صعبة جدا more than two-thirds of Gaza's 2.3 million people have fled their homes since the war began. According to the Palestinian Health Authority, more than 11,070 Palestinians, 66% of them women and minors, have been killed. Another 2,650 people have been reported missing. The head of Ukraine's ground forces says Russian troops have begun a push to regain territory near Bakhmut. A military spokesperson said Russian attacks on the shattered eastern town of Avdivka had eased in the past day, but were likely to intensify again. Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky used his nightly address to warn again that Ukraine must prepare for winter, fearing Russia will pick up its campaign of systematic strikes on power facilities. Ukrainian presidential aide Andrei Yermak said on Sunday that he'd arrived in the U.S. with a delegation headed by the economy minister for talks on cooperation and support at the White House. Meanwhile, some Ukrainian refugees have returned home from Israel. They found they'd exchanged one war for another. Поэтому ну, там было очень страшно, э, когда террористы заходили в город. Так как мы были в Ашкелоне, это же недалеко возле Газа, поэтому вот это было очень страшно, когда ты читал, э, слышал, что массовая резня, вот это было страшно. 
The family is back in Kharkiv, which is regularly hit by Russian attacks. Sirens are still a part of life, but for this family, it's a relief to be back. Anger on the streets of Spain as demonstrators turned out on Sunday to condemn the government's plans to grant amnesty to Catalan lawmakers who fled the country after a failed secession bid in 2017. The deal, supported by the pro-independence Catalonian Junts, will help incumbent Prime Minister Pedro Sánchez secure the majority he needs to stay in power. But the Conservative PP and far-right Vox Party say the move is a violation of the rule of law. Euronews reporter Jaime Velázquez has more from Madrid. España no vivía una ola de protestas similar desde la sentencia contra los líderes del proceso en 2019. Entonces los indultos y la apertura del diálogo apaciguaron los ánimos en Cataluña. Pero desde aquí, desde el otro lado, para estos manifestantes una nueva ley de amnistía a medida de los socios independentistas de Pedro Sánchez y el regreso de Carlos Puigdemont a España sin ser juzgado sobrepasa los límites del Estado de Derecho. A pocos días de la investidura de Pedro Sánchez, la oposición se prepara ya para una larga batalla en los tribunales y también en las calles. En Madrid, Jaime Velázquez, Euronews. The authorities in Iceland have declared a state of emergency after completing the evacuation of 3,700 residents from the town of Grindavik. It lies on the country's southwestern coast and magma has been shifting under the Earth's crust, causing hundreds of smaller warning earthquakes. Iceland is used to volcanic activity. The most disruptive episode in recent times was the 2010 eruption of the Eyjafjallajökull volcano, which spewed huge clouds of ash leading to widespread airspace.